This presentation is directed towards state directors and event supervisors that are involved with the 2017 National Science Olympiad Astronomy event. It is supported by the um, NASA Universe of Learning partnership that is involved with STEM education and outreach, uh, literacy in the content of astrophysics. The um, NASA Astrophysics Division now has a more formal partnership with the National Science Olympiad and uh, therefore, along with the uh, Chandra X-ray Observatory, which is still heavily involved um, with the um, Science Olympiad resources and materials to support the space science events, um, we now have an opportunity to provide even more resources and materials specifically geared towards Science Olympiad, astronomy, and Reach for the Stars events. The webinars for 2017 for both Astronomy and Reach for the Stars are posted on the Chandra website. They are available. There are eight YouTube video clips, uh, and they will give an overview. That's the first place that an event supervisor should go also. Uh, those are produced for teams, but they are also very invaluable for event supervisors, and it gives you a good idea of the overall content. It gives uh, information about each of the deep sky objects. The PowerPoint presentation for the webinars is posted on the National Science Olympiad website, and each slide has on in the notes section a link directly to a website that has the most, um, well, probably valuable, um, summarized, quick, down and dirty information about that particular deep sky object to give teams um, a beginning for how to research um, articles and websites for each particular object. So the PowerPoints are posted on the National Science Olympiad website and there is a link to the webinars that are posted on the Chandra website. The Astronomy C Division event description for 2017 is, is now available, and the description is that teams will have a knowledge and understanding of stellar evolution as it relates to Type 1a supernova events. The, this is the first um, time that we have gotten back uh, to supernova events and variable stars. We have spent the last two years, as you know, with exoplanets and how they form during the certain stages of stellar evolution in that process. The events are, take about 50 minutes, a team of up to two, and you will see that the resources that are allowed in astronomy, each team member can bring a laptop or a three-ring binder. So each team will either have two laptops and by laptop I mean mobile device, it can also be a tablet or an iPad, and they will either have that or a three-ring binder. So each team will have two mobile devices or two three-ring binders or one of each, and they are permitted to bring programmable calculators. No internet access is allowed. Um, that is because that is a general rule for all Science Olympiad events, that there is no internet access. and. Bear in mind that whatever the event description has in that is put out by National Science Olympiad, states, regionals, invitationals should all follow the event description, and whatever resources are allowed at the national event should also be allowed at the state and regional and invitational level of competition also. The competition for the stellar evolution in Type 1a supernovas is, does not change from year to year because basic stellar evolution is basic stellar evolution. It's always at least 50% of the content in astronomy is the same every single year. What changes in astronomy are only the deep sky objects. 
So you can the first paragraph in the event description that just that describes the competition has everything that's always on it every single year, such as HR diagrams, spectra, light curves, uh, physical properties and characteristics of stars in all wavelengths. And the part A starts to show the differentiation from year to year. This year, since we have type 1A supernova events is actually the focus of of the competition, you have things like red dwarfs, uh, red giants, white dwarfs, neutron stars, planetary nebulae, um, certain systems that lead to the formation or could possibly lead to the formation of a type 1a supernova event, variable stars, globular clusters, and the mathematics part this year besides Kepler's laws uh, which are always necessary, that's always a part of the competition, there's nothing different there, spectroscopic parallax, the distance modulus is always there, and this year we have Hubble's Law to calculate um, distances in the universe because we have type 1a supernova events, and when we find one in a galaxy far, far away, that can be used to measure the distance to that type 1a supernova event and therefore the distance to that particular galaxy. The deep sky objects um, are listed there. They are all different stages of stellar evolution that are involved from with the process from formation to destruction of a white dwarf because that's what a type 1a supernova event is, the destruction of a white dwarf. Uh, one thing to bring to your mind in these, uh, to remind you of in these deep sky objects is uh, Heinz 2-428. I want to make sure I have that correct because when I did the webinar for astronomy, I transposed uh, two of the numbers in, in that title. I had Heinz 2-248 instead of 428. So this is an opportunity to show you how you can be led astray because uh, there was one team who noticed the, the error and let me know, fortunately. Um, they had found a published research peer-reviewed journal article that had done the same thing. It had the name correct within the body of the article but the title of it was transposed, just like I did myself. So um, be, you know, be diligent when you're looking at these things because it's very easily, you're very easily led astray and can make mistakes. So it is Heinz 2-428, and we have um, an extra sentence or two on the National Science Olympiad stating that particular effect.